Over the Pride Lands, the sun is rising. Pride Rock attracts animals from all over the kingdom. Simba, the newborn lion cub of the ruling lions King Mufasa and Queen Sarabi, is being welcomed. All the animals bow before Simba as the Mandrel High Priest Rafiki introduces him to them. A little mouse is scurrying around his environment until he comes across the vicious Scar, Mufasa's jealous brother. Before he can devour the mouse, Scar is interrupted by Mufasa's hornbill majordomo Zazu. He warns Scar that Mufasa is on his way to punish him for missing out on the ceremony for Simba. Mufasa arrives to confront his brother, just as Scar is trying to make lunch out of Zazu. Scar expresses his anger for not getting his place on the throne after Mufasa, now that Simba is born. After Mufasa and Zazu leave, Scar looks on with disregard. Rafiki is by his tree, where he uses several bugs to form a drawing of Simba on the tree. Time passes, and Simba is an eager and curious little cub. He wakes up his father so that he can explore the Pride Lands. Mufasa explains that everything in the Pride Lands is theirs but anything beyond the borders is forbidden from venturing into. He also tells his son that they are connected in the great circle of life in regards to his duty as a future king. Zazu then flies in for the morning report before Mufasa teaches Simba how to pounce on the bird. Moments later, Zazu tells Mufasa that he has spotted hyenas. Mufasa orders Simba to go to Sarabi. Simba goes to Scar, who rests alone on his own little rock. As Simba expresses curiosity over what is beyond the borders of the Pride Lands, Scar tells him that it's an elephant graveyard. Simba then goes to find his best friend Nala, who is in the middle of a bath. Simba gets his own bath from Sarabi before he tells Nala that he wants to go to the watering hole, but Sarabi makes the cubs take Zazu as a companion. On their walk, Simba tells Nala where they are really going. Zazu notices them together, and notes how cute it is to see two betrothed cubs together. This grosses out Simba and Nala, who insist they are only friends. Zazu says those are the rules, and Simba says he is going to change some of these rules when he becomes king. The cubs lose Zazu among the other animals before they head to the elephant graveyard. While exploring, they are found by a pack of hyenas, led by Shensi, Kamari, and Azizah. Shensi is ready to eat them once she realizes who Simba is, even as Zazu flies in, to warn her that doing so would start a war with Mufasa. The pack then surrounds the cubs. Simba tries to roar at the hyenas but is limited to simple growls. As they laugh and ask him to do it again, a louder roar is heard. Mufasa runs in and fights off the hyenas before ordering Shensi to back off. The hyenas retreat but Mufasa is upset at Simba as he takes him and Nala home. Mufasa has Zazu take Nala home while he talks to Simba. He expresses his disappointment in him, but Simba tries to defend himself by saying that he was trying to be brave like Mufasa. He tells his son that he's only brave when he needs to be, and that he was afraid of losing Simba. They then sit to look up at the stars, and Mufasa tells Simba that the great kings of the past are looking down on them. The hyenas return to their hideout, complaining about their lack of food. It is then shown that Scar is leading them, and he deliberately led Simba and Nala to their path. He then tells the hyenas about his plan to kill Mufasa so that he will lead the Pride Lands, and this will also mean more food for the hyenas. The next day, Scar brings Simba to a valley to practice his roar. After he leaves Simba alone, he gives the hyenas the signal to make their move. Suddenly, Simba looks up at the cliff to notice a wildebeest stampede. He runs for it and climbs up a tree for safety. Scar finds Mufasa and Zazu, warning his brother about Simba being trapped in the valley while telling Zazu to alert the lionesses. Mufasa runs through the herd of wildebeest to reach Simba. He brings the cub up to safety but is dragged away by the wildebeest. Mufasa then starts climbing up the hill, only to be caught by Scar who sinks his claws into Mufasa's paws. With a sinister look in his eyes, Scar tells Mufasa, Long live the king, and he smacks his brother off the cliff to his death. Simba watches helplessly as his father falls. He runs down and discovers Mufasa's body, tearfully pleading with him to wake up. 
Scar finds Simba and says it's all his fault that his father is dead. Fearing for the consequences, Simba asks Scar what to do, and Scar orders him to run away and never return. After Simba does so, he sends Shensi, Kamari and Azaiza to chase after Simba and kill him. Simba outruns the hyenas to the edge of a cliff where he and the fourth hyena fall over. Shensi orders the other two to make sure Simba is dead, but they figure to themselves that he could not have survived the fall, and they are not eager to climb down and check. Simba is seen hiding before continuing his exile. Scar announces Mufasa's death to the lionesses, and then says that Simba was also killed. He pretends to be sad before walking up to Pride Rock to assume his new duties as king, and then brings the hyenas out. Zazu and Rafiki watch from a distance and cry for Mufasa and Simba. Simba walks alone for miles before ending up in a desert. He collapses in exhaustion before a group of vultures flies over and tries to eat him. Taiman and Pumba interrupt them by scaring the vultures away before locating Simba. The two decide they should keep the cub so that when he grows into an adult lion, he will be on their side. Simba wakes up and is hopeless, still blaming himself for his father's death. Taiman and Pumba take him in and show him how they live their lives, according to their motto, Hakuna Matata. Since the other animals are friends, Simba can't eat them and now feasts on bugs. He spends more time with Taiman and Pumba, now growing into an adult. Under Scar's reign, due to the hyena's exhaustion of all resources, the Pride Lands run out of food and supplies. Nala expresses concern over how things have turned. Scar even tries to get Sarabi to be his queen, promising that she can dine with him, but she refuses. He then has the hyenas eat the rest of his kill, leaving only scraps for the lionesses. Later that night, Nala tries to leave Pride Rock, but she is spotted by Zazu, who knows what Scar will do to her if he catches her leaving. Therefore, he creates a diversion to get Scar and the hyenas to chase him, allowing Nala to get away. After spending a day eating only grubs, Simba, Taiman and Pumba lay down to look up at the stars. Taiman and Pumba wonder what might be up there. Simba mentions what Mufasa once told him about the ancient kings looking down on them. Taiman and Pumba laugh it off, which bothers Simba. He goes to be alone, and as he lays down, some fur from his mane flies off. It is blown away and goes through a few animals before it finds its way to Rafiki. He senses that Simba is still alive, and he smiles. Taiman and Pumba are walking through their home while singing. The lion sleeps tonight, before Nala attacks and chases after them. While they run, Simba jumps out and pounces on Nala, but after she pins him down, he realizes who it is. Simba is excited to see his best friend again while Nala is happy that Simba is alive. However, the happiness is short-lived once Nala tells Simba that he needs to return home due to what Scar and the hyenas have done. Still feeling guilty, he refuses to go back. Nala leaves him when he becomes too stubborn and doesn't listen to her. Simba sets out on his own until he is found by Rafiki. He tells Simba he knows Mufasa and that he is alive. Simba follows Rafiki and is led to a lake. Rafiki makes Simba see his reflection, which turns into the image of Mufasa. Up in the clouds, Simba sees and hears Mufasa's voice as his face is illuminated by lightning. Mufasa knows that Simba has forgotten who he is, and therefore has forgotten his own father. He tells him to remember that he is the one true king. Now realizing his purpose, Simba runs off to catch up with Nala, and Taiman and Pumba follow. The four make it to the Pride Lands and meet with Zazu, who is also happy to see Simba again. They see how bad the land looks, and why it is urgent that they stop Scar. Simba has Taiman and Pumba be live bait to distract the hyenas and to let them get to Pride Rock. Simba sees Scar hurting Sarabi when she defies him again. Everyone is stunned to see Simba returning, and he goes by his mother's side. By forcing Simba to acknowledge his involvement in Mufasa's death, Scar makes an attempt to reverse the situation. Scar advances towards Simba, causing him to slip and hang over the edge of Pride Rock. Lightning strikes a nearby tree causing a fire down below. 
Scar then talks a lot to Simba over how he looks, not realizing he is openly admitting his own guilt for the lionesses to hear. He then whispers to Simba that he killed Mufasa. Simba then attacks his murderous uncle. Scar confesses to his crime then, however, he sends the hyenas after the lionesses, beginning an all-out war. The lions battle the hyenas, while Timon, Pumbaa, and Rafiki all get a few good licks in. Simba then goes after Scar, who tries to run away. When Simba confronts him, Scar blames the hyenas and says that he was planning to kill them for their supposed crime. Scar begs Simba for mercy, and Simba orders him to do the same thing he ordered him to do as a cub, run away and never return. Scar seems to agree to the terms, but instead throw hot embers in Simba's face. The two then begin to fight, swinging claws at each other until Simba gains the upper hand and knocks Scar off the edge of the cliff. He survives and sees the hyenas coming toward him. The rain falls over the pride lands to wash away the fire. With the hyenas gone, the lionesses gather around pride rock. Zazu and Rafiki allow Simba his chance to ascend. He walks to the edge of Pride Rock and hears Mufasa's voice saying, Remember. With that, he roars before the lionesses to become the new Lion King. The Pride Lands return to their former glory, looking beautiful and prosperous once more. Simba and Nala are now king and queen, and Rafiki presents their cub Kiara to the rest of the animals, thereby continuing the circle of life. <laughs>